I haven't done one of these in such a long time. Uh, welcome back to my channel. If you haven't been here in a while, my name is Brian. I'm a VFX artist. I like to post tutorials, walkthroughs, and analysis of things happening in the visual effects industry, and really just sharing my knowledge that I have gained uh, working in the industry as well. In this particular video, you probably noticed at the top of that jet fighter sequence that we did that was heavily inspired from Top Gun Maverick. I wanted to showcase that because that was actually done in Nuke, which really showcases the power that we have. And it's not even a finished shot. It's kind of where that shot ended up and we ended up moving on to other projects, but I wanted to share that with you. In this video, we're gonna go ahead and take some time to actually analyze what a comp looks like in Nuke. I'll walk you guys through just a 2D image comp that I did in a demo recently. It looks a lot like this. The difference between Nuke and After Effects is dramatic. They both are compositing packages, however, Nuke being more expensive is far more powerful and you're able to access a lot more tools and utilize a lot more tools. I think one of the biggest bonuses though with Nuke actually lies in its node system. I'm gonna analyze that right now. The node system is absolutely amazing to use. You don't have to worry about pre-comps. You don't have to worry about uh, working in procedural. You already are working procedurally. I'm gonna show you what that looks like here in a little bit in this video. If you're interested in learning more about Nuke, definitely subscribe to this channel. My intent is to start uploading a lot more videos that concern Nuke here in the near future. I'm not going to ignore you After Effects users out there or you Premiere users. I'm still gonna be putting content up for you, but I wanna introduce Nuke content. And in the process, you'll also see me start introducing some Maya content as well. But hey, without any further ado, let's dive right in and let's take a look at what we can do in Nuke to really accomplish a quick and easy but good looking composition. Now for this particular render, uh, I just did a hero frame render. Uh, it was for a demo. Uh, that I was actually giving to students. Um, the render that we actually got out of Arnold looked a lot like this, and um, I, I made some mistakes intentionally, but also made some mistakes unintentionally as well. What I mean by that is I wanted to showcase how we can fix problems in uh, Nuke in, com in Comp. The difference between After Effects and Nuke is that we can work completely procedurally from start without pre-comps. Now, you can pre-comp in Nuke, and that's a, a video for another time, but I definitely wanted to showcase the possibilities here. Um, as you can see right here, outside of Arnold, we had a lot of issues with this render. Um, you can see that the for some reason the polygons um, were showing up in the subsurface scattering, uh, and that was... Uh, problematic. You can also see that uh, the subsurface scattering around her mouth was having issues because of the depth and the radius of the subsurface scattering as well. Um, also, you know, for the pose, this wasn't an animation class, so I didn't spend too much time posing. I just looked it up really quickly, made some facial expressions and went with it. And, uh, as we went through it, we realized I wanted it to go much, much deeper. And what we ended up finishing off with was uh, this shot right. And uh, this is the kind of, this is what we finished up with. Um, I have a motion blur that I did via vectors using a UV pass, actually. I was able to color her eyes. And uh, I actually rotoed for the eyes, even though I probably had an ID mat available to it. But I just rotoed um, or crypto map. Uh, I got a nice depth of field. Um, a lot of uh, motion blur happening here. Again, um, I also used the AO. I went in and changed her skin color, and we used a, an ST map to add in the tattoos. So let's go ahead and talk about what this actually looks like. So um, over here, uh, we just have our main CG passes all the way from diffuse to AO. I typically work left to right, but in this case, I actually ended up working right to left. And that's, um, it's not terrible, but it, it you know, for organization's sake, it, it, it's not the best, but it's all right here, all our CG passes. And uh, here, um, what I usually teach my students is to start with your diffuse out of Arnold, then your specular. In this case, I also had subsurface scattering, I had sheen. I also had a transmission pass. This is how we are doing the eye. I'll show you right now. Here, that's how the eyes are done or via transmission. And then uh, I believe this is the transmission right here. Um, and this is how I did the eye color. So right over here, I just did a quick roto, and uh, that's how we get the eye color done. Um, so yeah, this is how we do the eyes with transmission out of Arnold, and that's because there are two objects here. There's an inner sphere and an outer sphere, and this is how we're able to capture, uh, get catch light, and just get this nice looking, uh, these nice looking eyeballs CG wise. Now keep in mind, this is the Merry Rig, so I actually did not model this, but that's how it is textured. That's how it is shaded inside of Arnold. I also have this AO pass or a clay render pass that I use that really does a good job of capturing 
areas of the object where light is not allowed to escape. These are occlusion areas. Essentially, you know, if you think about it, you have light that comes in and then it bounces around, but some light gets out, obviously, because we can see it, but some light actually gets absorbed in the process or diffuses out. And what ends up happening is we get these nice shadows. And this is usually what happens with contact shadows. As you can see, if I um, come down here to show you, this is with the AO pass. Uh, and this is actually without the AO pass. At the at first glance, this looks good. However, to the uh, to the untrained eye, this looks good. But to the trained eye, uh, not necessarily. If you come over here now, so if you look, you can see that it's just missing that that occlusion right there. And so I decided to add it in. And this is one of the rare circumstances where I actually don't mix it down that far. I actually only mix it down to about 0.7. Sometimes I mix these down all the way down here. But because of the, the mood I was going for this shot, I really wanted this to look like um, <laughs> heavily inspired by like a Sith, uh, a Sith Lord, basically, uh, from Star Wars. So anyways, these are the main CG passes. Now, this is, um, to give you an idea, this is what it looks like at the end of those CG passes with a few things that happened over here. So how did I do the tattoos? Well, let's take a look at that. So if you look over here, um, I used a crypto mat to just go ahead and isolate the skin. And I used a crypto mat in conjunction with this UV pass here, which isn't the best UV pass. Unfortunately, the situation I'm in, I actually cannot modify the um, UVs on Mary. Um, it's just the way that the uh, geometry is in Maya. Uh, I was not, I was unable to modify the UVs. So if you come down here and take a look, I use a color matrix here to kind of modify these passes to my liking. Uh, and then I use an ST map projection with this skull image, uh, which I prepared. Um, and I kind of just use this as an alpha. And all of this down here, uh, all the way down here is just getting this projection using an ST map to that arm. Uh, this color is irrelevant. I just picked a random color. But what I'm actually doing here is I am um, using this as an alpha, copy it and pre-molt it, and now I'm able to put it over. This is a hero frame, but by this methodology, using a UV pass, the in theory, these tattoos would actually maneuver uh, in an animation. So just keep that in mind. So that's how I did the tattoos. Pretty easy. Um, one of the big problems I have is right here, though. Um, as you can see, the, the uh, tattoos are bleeding a little bit in. Um, I didn't have to modify it too much. Um, the AO actually took, took care of it for me. So that's with the AO right there. And that, I think that's another crucial reason why we include the AO. One thing I'm not happy with is how much bleed there is over here on the, um, uh, from the ST map. And I had to use an edge blur. Unfortunately, it was actually creeping in and looked wrong, at least at this point, um, once I through this on, I can handle this bleed here in a vector motion, but I'm gonna show you guys that here uh, coming up. One other thing I did not show you guys as well too is I came over here and created um, a couple of depth masks off of my Z depth pass from Arnold. Now the Z depth pass from Arnold comes in at a very high range. As you can see, look at the numbers right here, very high range, and uh, that's why we can't visualize it. I actually create this grade over here uh, to visualize it. So if you take a look, I have this grade uh, just to visualize it a little bit better. But I end up actually using this uh, and, I'll, and I'll show you what I mean here in just a few moments. But I end up actually using this. If you come down here, you'll take a look um, this grade here. Um, I use another grade with uh, the Mary mask here because I want to actually manipulate her. So kind of hard to see, but it just manipulates her. Only downside is I get this issue happening right here. I clean that up later, though. Um, I use a matrix to get this pass aliased a little bit better because by default, uh, Arnold comes in anti-alias. Just by the way the z depth pass is rendered, it's rendered using the closest filter. So it doesn't really come in uh, anti-aliased. So the aliasing is pretty bad. So I actually like to throw on a matrix right here. And all this is is taking, hey, um, can you, you know, it's, it's basically an aliasing matrix right here. Nothing too complicated, but obviously a lot of people don't uh, uh, quite understand what's actually happening here. Yeah, could I have used an edge blur, which I actually use these in conjunction to kind of enhance it a little bit further. But with the matrix, I felt I had more control. As a composite, that's what I'm always staring for. So I actually, so we take this death pass here, though, and I actually copy this channel back in since I destroyed my channel information. And so uh, let's talk about this real quick. So... <laughs> this was part of the demo. I'm actually going to delete this real quick. We no longer need that. Uh, I was demoing for a student. Um, but if you come down here, what I actually do is since I have the UV pass here, uh, if I show you guys this, so I have the UV pass uh, still in this chain, uh, thankfully. 
I did not kill my channels yet at this point, although I should have killed my channels around here as well because I no longer need them and I actually cycle in passes that I can use later. But I use a roto here and did I use a vector blur. And this is honestly, this was R&D um, that I did in the middle of a lecture. Uh, but I was happy with the results. It's not necessarily the best route to go. I would actually not advise this if you're in a production setting. Just get a motion vector pass. But unfortunately, we did not get a motion vector pass because this is not an animation. It was a hero frame. So what I did was I just took the um, UVs and I actually used them to drive my vector motion blur, which was uh, which is a little unique. But it worked. Uh, here it is. And there it is. And that's really what helps me with my edges. Uh, for the purposes of this demo, this it really worked out. Here is that depth pass being copied back in, and then I use that depth pass to create a defocus. Um, here's the defocus. So before, after, um, and that defocus really goes a long way at this point. So a combination, just to show you what I mean. So this is before, vector motion, defocus. And then I use an edge blur here. Now this edge blur uh, is just to help me uh, down the line. Very small edge blur actually. And what I'm actually doing is I'm actually blurring off of just Mary. So just Mary right here. So just these edges. And it was just to help me get her back into the background after I did all this vector motion and uh, this depth of field. I just felt like um, some of these edges just needed a little bit of help. And that's what this is doing. Is it necessary? Maybe maybe not, but um, with all the, the blurring that I'm doing, but I just felt the need um, to just kind of get her back into the background. Uh, if you remember, I actually created a second depth mask. I actually use this now as a mask. So here is that being graded down again. And then I shuffle that into uh, an alpha. And I use this to start creating some effects here to show you what happened. So if you take a look right there, that's the grade. I actually use that to stencil this out. It, all I did here is just use a noise with a directional blur, mask that, stenciled out her so she looks like she's in it. And then I just laid that over and that's how we got the fog. Um, I actually do a, another directional blur here. Uh, just to give more motion to the overall scene. Now, the difference between this and the vector motion is this is actually affecting the whole scene, whereas the vector motion is just affecting her. And the reason why I do this is because I wanted to make it look like there is action happening in the scene, like she is actually flying back in the scene. Um, and so that's what this is doing. Uh, I I, this is a conscious decision. I actually tried this before, and I just didn't like the look, and I actually ended up liking this. This is one of those cases where physically this isn't how it would actually work in lens or in camera, but uh, it actually looked better this way. So, And that is the finished comp, and that's how we got to this point. If this interested you and you really like this comp, make sure you hit like and subscribe to this channel. Like I said, I'm going to post a lot more new content here in the future. Does this make Nuke attractive enough to maybe take a look at it over After Effects? Or would you prefer more After Effects over Nuke? I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.